from the 1950 Bowman set. And what's significant about this card to me is it's the last card I needed to complete a Boston Braves team set from 1950 Bowman. And it's a gorgeous card, though it's the lowest graded card in the set I've picked up. About half the cards are graded that I put together in this team set and the other half are not, but this is far and away the uh, the card in the quote-unquote worst condition. But it's still a very, very outstanding looking card and that's principally because it has really, really excellent registration. So 1950 Bowman, this is sort of an interesting card. This is actually from 1989 Bowman. And when Topps reintroduced the Bowman sets, they included uh, 11 cards from the past in the sweepstakes cards, sort of a bonus card that would appear in every pack. And the only card from 1950 featured was um, Jackie Robinson. And there were 252 cards in the set. And the cards themselves were actually only two and one sixteenth inch by two and a half inches. Uh, and this card, I think, is to scale. Um, you know, the, the image on the inset is about the right size because uh, when, when Topps reintroduced Bowman in 1989, for whatever reason, they chose to do it in the kind of the oversized, non-standard size card, uh, which was uh, two and a half by three and three quarters inches. So, you know, there's obviously a lot of white space around this card. But the cards themselves are actually quite small, but they're very beautiful. And uh, I think this is kind of a nice slide to kind of illustrate the difference, the significance of the 1950 set. Because the previous set in 1949, though it was of comparable size, was not of the same quality. The cards in 1949 were tinted photos that had colored backgrounds. And uh, uh, the new cards, however, were um, hand-painted photo reproductions. So they took uh, realistic photos and uh, did an artistic rendering on top of them. And uh, so they're very, very artful. Um, what's significant about this slide is uh, the 1950 season began by changing, making some significant changes in the roster. And specifically, Eddie Stanky and Alvin Dark were traded to the New York Giants for uh, Sid Gordon, uh, Buddy Kerr, and Willard Marshall, as well as uh, Red Webb, who, uh, who uh, wasn't featured in the 1950 Bowman set. As a matter of fact, would never pitch another game in the major leagues, though he had a very limited uh, career for the New York Giants. But this kind of illustrates the difference between the 1949 and 50 sets. Uh, they were very comparable in size. There were 240 cards in the 1949 set, and there were 252 in the 1950 set. And what's also kind of interesting about the uh, the 1950 Bowman set is it was uh, identical to the 1950 Bowman football set. And I only have one card from that set, the football set, and that's this card of uh, Charlie Trippy. And of course, I collect Charlie Trippy because he was a uh, he was a back for the um, University of Georgia as well. As a matter of fact, he was uh, second in the Heisman balloting uh, one year, and he played with uh, Frank Sinkwich, who did win the Heisman Trophy one season and was part of a national championship team, consensus national championship team in the early '40s, as well as a um, another championship team that um, played in the Rose Bowl. So a very, very significant player, a Hall of Famer. And what's sort of cool about this 1950 Bowman card of Charlie Trippi is uh, the color reproduction here was made from uh, a photograph of him in college. And, uh, of course, UGA had red jerseys just as uh, the Chicago Cardinals did, so it wasn't that much of a reach to do this. Um, but it's a really, really um, gorgeous set. And... Uh, it's, uh, I think it would be very interesting to, to collect both the baseball and the football sets. They're both very, very, very beautiful. All right, so this is kind of a spoiler slide. This is the entire team set 
of the Boston Braves as I picked them up. They would only be in Boston for um, the 50, 51, and 52 seasons. And in 53, they would move to Milwaukee. And in 1966, they would move to Atlanta. And uh, it was a good team. Uh, they were middle of the road. They were an average team. They went to 83 and 71. They finished fourth in the National League. And you have to remember in um, 1950, there were only 16 teams in Major League Baseball. There were eight teams in each league. And uh, the pennant winner would play the other pennant winner for the World Series, and that was it. That really wasn't much to the playoffs, unless there was a tie uh, for one of the league pennants, in which case they would have a three-game playoff. And that actually happened the following year, in 1951. And uh, that trade that we talked about earlier, which was wide, uh, widely considered at the time to be very, very favorable to the Braves, actually, in retrospect, was probably a better trade for the Giants because those two players... Eddie Stanky and uh, Alvin Dark played a major contributing role to the New York Giants, making that uh, remarkable comeback in the National League pennant and ultimately tying and then uh, defeating the Brooklyn Dodgers in a, a three-game series with the uh, culminating shot being uh, Bobby Thompson's shot heard around the wor world, who ironically would be traded to the Braves shortly thereafter. But uh, in any event, this is the team as it was comprised um, – at least in the 1950 Bowman set. There wasn't a top set yet. Tops would come out in 51 was sort of a game set in 52, kind of the first authentically um, a real baseball set. But uh, there's some interesting quirks to this set. There are 15 cards, and three of them are rookie cards. Uh, the most significant rookie card being Sam the Jet Jethro. Uh, and it's actually the first season that uh, Boston, the Braves, featured an integrated team. And uh, Sam Jethro was the one who uh, broke that barrier. Uh, Johnny Antonelli, who you see on the left, he was a bonus baby pitcher, and I think he signed a bonus in the neighborhood of $45,000, which I think was the, the largest bonus contract uh, in Major League Baseball history at the time. Uh, he played a very, very limited role uh, originally uh, for Boston and later would become an all-star for the, um, the Giants. In fact, what's kind of interesting about Antonelli is he, he moved with Boston to Milwaukee uh, as a Brave and then having been traded to the New York Giants, he moved from the Giants uh, in New York to San Francisco too. So he kind of made both turns. Um, the last rookie is Del Crandall who, uh, who played a lot of significant time uh, during this season. He wasn't the starting catcher most of the season. That was uh, uh, Walker Cooper. And as a matter of fact, these are your starters. Um, I've highlighted Warren Spahn because he was sort of the ace on the team if I had to choose a, uh, uh, a pitcher for a starter. And uh, the only starter missing from the 50 Bowman set is Roy Hartsfield, the second baseman. But the rest of these players uh, were your starters. Uh, and uh, these are your pitchers. Um, the primary pitchers were um, Warren Spahn and Vern Bickford, who you see uh, featured on the top row. And the other two most significant pitchers were Johnny Sane and Max Sircon, and neither of them appear in the 1950 Bowman set. They do appear in, in later sets. Sid Gordon was probably your uh, MVP. He had a 6.3 war this season. Uh, Sam Jethro, as I said, this is his rookie card, and he was uh, uh, the first uh, African-American athlete uh, on the Boston team. You know, the Boston Red Sox were the last team in Major League Baseball to integrate, but Boston, uh, the Boston Braves were one of the first in the National League, the Dodgers, of course, being number one. And I want to say Jethro was maybe the third or fourth uh, person to uh, integrate baseball overall. Uh, let alone in the National uh, League. Now, what's interesting about this card, aside from being a rookie card, is that it's part of the um, part of the last series. Cards uh, 181 to 252 are sort of unusual because uh, they feature these variations. 
And the variation is the absence of a copyright on the back of the card. Some of them have it, some of them don't. Uh, apparently it's more scarce when they're not, uh, when they don't have a, a copyright. Uh, but there doesn't seem to be, people don't seem to pay a premium either way. Uh, and this is the only card I have without the copyright. And it's, uh, there are three cards from the Braves team set that are part of that last series. But this is the only one without a copyright. Now, uh, there were seven series of uh, 36 cards. And uh, the, ironically, the first two series, um, cards 1 through 72, seem to be scarcer than the other series. And so while most uh, collections, most sets, uh, have high numbers that carry a premium because they're the scarcest, in uh, 1950 Bowman, it's actually uh, quite the opposite. The first two series, ones and two, uh, seem to be slightly more scarce uh, and in more demand. And uh, regrettably, most of the Hall of Famers appear in those, those first two sets. So it's, uh, I guess it could be a more challenging uh, to put the set together if you're trying to put together a Hall, Hall of Fame set. Uh, this is Bob Elliott. He was also a very valuable um, player on the team. He was uh, uh, the fourth most quote-unquote valuable player to the team, earning 4.6 war during this season. And uh, this is one of the cards that's uh, graded, obviously. Uh, I have two cards that are SGC cards, and I have, I guess, five others that are PSA. And uh, they span the whole genre of, of PSA cards. Uh, this is one of the older uh, slabs and it seems to be accurately graded. We'll look at another card that has a seven and maybe it probably wouldn't be a seven at PSA if you were submit to submit it uh, and get it graded uh, these days. But uh, this is Buddy Kerr. This is one of the players that was traded and this was one of the first seasons. And uh, this card was real challenged to get uh, with excellent registration. A lot of them were, uh, were very, very blurry. And uh, this one looks really, really good. Uh, even blown up at this uh, at this size. Of course, here's Dale Crandall, and this is one of my favorites. This um, they actually recycle this imagery in the 1951 card as well. Uh, the 51 cards are very very similar to the 1950 Bowman cards. The set is a little larger. There are 324 cards in that set, but the cards are also a little larger. And uh, this uh, they feature like a, a well, many of them feature a, a banner um, with the um, with the player name on it as well. So anyway, they, they recycle this image, and I'm glad they did because I kind of like it. It's got the old school equipment, uh, but they did remove the face mask just so you can get a better picture of Crandall. Uh, Vernon Bickford, as I said, he was the second most valuable pitcher on the team, which is somewhat of a surprise because uh, Johnny Sane and Spawn were kind of the studs uh, on the 48 team that reached the World Series. Uh, but Bickford had a very significant and uh, 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 successful career in the beginning in Boston. And I guess there you can see uh, an example of the copyright that appears at the bottom if you didn't uh, notice uh, before. Uh, this is the other SGC card I have. This is Willard Marshall. Uh, and he was part of that trade too. Johnny Antonelli, as I mentioned, was the, uh, the bonus baby. Uh, he apparently created a great deal of resentment on the team because he, uh, his bonus was significantly larger than many of the star players on the Braves earned in a season. And uh, so there was some hostility in the clubhouse, and uh, to a certain extent that's understandable. Uh, Tommy Holmes... Uh, he was uh, at a 2.1 war in 1950s, so he was, you know, maybe the seventh quote-unquote most valuable player on the team that season. Uh, you know, it was my recollection that the, um, yeah, there it is, outfield. He played outfield, and more specifically in a right field, and he was a starter. Uh, I was a little surprised to see that um, the cards didn't feature right field, left field center field. They just uh, called out outfield and that was all there was to it. So I had to look up afterwards in baseball reference um, who played where. And as it turns out, Sid Gordon was in left field. Uh, the Jet, Sam Jethro, was in center field and Holmes was the primary starter in right field. This is Walker Cooper. 
he played most of the he started most of the games as the catcher, but there was a lot of time divided with uh, Del Crandall, and Del Crandall had become the the catcher of the future for the Braves. This is Earl Torgerson. I've mentioned before that it was very unusual in that era for someone to play with glasses on, but he did. And uh, he was the second most valuable player on the team. He had a 5.9 war. Uh, this is Sibby Sisty. This is a uh, modern PSA slab. And this card's in super good shape. Uh, Bob Chipman was one of the pitchers on the, on the team. I think his role was primarily in a uh, relief pitching capacity. Uh, Pete Riser, sometimes Harold Riser, usually Pete on cards. And he was in the outfield and he played uh, he played a mix of left and right and center to fill in for players, principally left and right. It's my recollection that my notes don't explicitly say that. So there you have it, the 1950 Bowman. Boston Braves team set. It was a challenge to put this together. It took um, took uh, a little over two and a half years to put this together. I started in uh, February of 2020 and finished uh, just a few days ago, so July 2022. So just a little short of two and a half years. I was patient because. Uh, as I said, I wanted cards with excellent registration, even if they didn't have necessarily a quote-unquote uh, excellent grade to them. Uh, but uh, I, I looked at a lot of cards of each of them and chose ones that I thought were vivid and sharp and colorful. Um, some of them uh, typically aren't very sharp, and uh, you have to be patient and look for them. Others can be very, very commonly uh, in great shape with great centering and great registration, which I guess is probably attributable to being in the center of the uh, the sheets. But again, these were small series. These were 32, no, excuse me, 36 card series. So uh, there, there should be very good centering uh, because there shouldn't be really that, that many cards on the edge. Uh, but the borders are narrow. And so the, uh, when the, when the centering isn't perfect, I think it's a little more apparent to the naked eye. Well, there you have it, 1950 Bowman, Boston Braves. Uh, I hope you have a great rest of your week, and I will talk to you later. See you.